Hello everyone. Uh, so in this video I'm just going to recap some of the things we covered in class. Uh, we are going to be using the New York City Community Health Survey data from 2012 in this example to reconstruct essentially a, a map in um, CardoDB, which is one of the online tools that we explored during class. Uh, and, and in this example, you know what I what I want to stress is the value of doing this when you don't just have data at hand that's already preloaded in a shape file like we did uh, in the case of the 2008 community health survey data. So when you don't have the advantage of having the data ready to go that's already kind of uh, pre-set up for a, a GIS, um, this is one way that you can start creating essentially your your own maps using attribute data um, when you have the shape file but you just don't have the attributes right so um, the first step here is I want you to just do a quick web search for New York City Community Health Survey and you should find it pretty quickly this will take you to the CHS main page here. And so there's a lot of good information here. Uh, the Community Health Survey, as we talked about in class, is a survey uh, on the health of New Yorkers. It's, it's um, a survey that's conducted over the, over the phone. It's uh, approximately 10,000 uh, New Yorkers every year, and, and they have data on a variety of health indicators going back for, for a number of years. Um, and so what we want to do in this case is we want to work with some of the 2012 data. And so uh, the health department uh, keeps a lot of their interactive uh, health data in something called EpiQuery. So down here, sort of in the middle, you'll see a link for EpiQuery. Go ahead and click on that. That'll take you to the EpiQuery page. And the option that we want here is under Community Health Survey data, just go ahead and click on 2012. So the, every year, again, there's about 30 to 40 health indicators. Uh, what I want you to do essentially for, for this exercise is, is pick two of these that you think are, are interesting and compelling, and you're going to grab data from both of them, and we're going to put them into a nice CardoDB table, and then we're going to create a nice map out of the results. So I'm going to kind of walk you through the first uh, step here. So um, I think for this example, I'm going to try working with uh, some interesting environmental health data here, which I haven't worked with before. Uh, so I'm going to click on cockroaches. If I mouse over the option here, I'll see I get this little pop-up. It's basically going to tell you the question that was asked um, of the respondent over the phone. So in this case, uh, these are people responding yes or no to the question, in the past month, have you seen any cockroaches inside your home? Right. So, an interesting data set. I'll select that and I'll click Submit and I'll get back first the citywide estimates. So, of all the New Yorkers uh, surveyed, 0.8% uh, per, of them answered yes to whether or not they had seen any cockroaches inside their home and 71% or so said no. All right, but what I want to see is a, a sort of a further breakdown of that. I want to see it by United Hospital Fund neighborhood, right? And so the UHF neighborhoods are aggregates of zip codes. They're not going to match up perfectly to, say, the Department of City Planning's neighborhood boundaries, um, but, but they're still pretty interesting because they give you a sub-borough estimate for some of these uh, health indicators. Uh, so I'm going to click on this option here, show results with the neighborhood map, and click on Submit again. And that'll take me to this page where I'll see a map and two tabs. Again, I have the survey question asked here at the top. In the past month, have you seen any cockroaches inside your home? And people that answered yes are mapped here, and people that answer no are mapped here. So um, that's interesting in and of itself. And in this case, though, I, I do want to compare that with something else. So the next step is I want to scroll down here so you'll see the data. And the way that the community health survey data is generally broken up is, is by respondents, of course, answering yes and no to the question. So you'll usually find both variables included in the data. And if I scroll down here to the bottom, I'll see this, this download results as a CSV file. So when I click on that, that's going to give me a, a CSV file that then I can pull into Excel, uh, which I've already done here. And I, I pretty much left this alone. I did just a few things here. Um, so, so first step that I'd suggest is just to simplify things a little bit. You'll see over here on the right, 
um, I'm only showing uh, answers um, for, for yes, right? People that responded yes. And that's because I applied a filter here. If I take the filter off, I'm seeing, seeing both. Um, because these are by neighborhood, what I would suggest you do when you're starting with um, a CSV file from scratch is simply highlight that first column, go to data, apply a filter, and basically tell it that all you're interested in looking at are the yes columns, right? So that'll give you that. And then all I, I've done in, in these other cases is I have kind of squished all the other columns that I'm not as interested in. The ones that I want to map are really this field, right? So this is the percent responding yes by a particular neighborhood, and then the neighborhood name. So the next step here, um, and you'll see why this is important in the next uh, thing that we do in CardoDB, is I just want to sort this UHF new by the actual name uh, in, in alphabetical order. So I'm going to highlight that column. I'm going to go to data and I'll just click on this option here, sort A to Z, right? So expand the selection and you get back the results. So now I've, I've got a group by neighborhood and percent. All right, so that's great. That's pretty much all you have to do with the data. For, for what we're doing in this assignment, you don't have to worry about any of this other data um, for now. And so I'm just going to move this table out of the way. Now I'm going to go to CardoDB. As we talked about in class, CardoDB is a nice website for just doing quick uh, GIS maps, and it gives you a lot of power. Um, you can, you know, it's it's nice intuitive controls. You can get into it um, quickly. It, it generates CSS for you, and and um, it's just all in all a really nice tool. So I'm going to go ahead here and sign in. Obviously, if you don't have an account. Um, you can sign up for a free account. All right, so now I'm looking at my dashboard on CardoDB. Um, I'm under the tables heading here. And um, you'll, you'll see here one of the shape files that we worked with in class was the UHF 34 neighborhood. So this is the neighborhood shapes for the United Hospital Fund neighborhoods. And there's no data in here, right? So in class, we worked with uh, a shape file that already had the community health survey data. In this one, I'm just giving you an empty shell. So the nice thing about CardoDB is uh, if you haven't done so already, you can click on Add Table. Go ahead and browse to that shapefile that I gave you, um, the UHF 34 neighborhoods. Um, if you can't find it, I'll, I'll try and put it in the show notes as well, uh, in a place where you can get to it publicly. Um, and once you've loaded it, go ahead and click on UHF 34 neighborhoods. That's going to open up the table. And I've already pre-populated it with a couple of fields here, a var1 field and a var2 field. So basically what you'll want to do is once you find the variables that you're interested in, I want you to populate one variable here and one variable there. And then we should be ready to start doing some mapping. Um, so um, first thing that I'm going to do under the first UHF column here is I just want to make sure this is in alphabetical order. And there we go. So I've resorted my results here. And next, I can simply pull up my spreadsheet. And then I just want to do basically uh, a one-to-one -one mapping of my percent uh, in, my, uh, in my Excel file to uh, the data that I'm showing here. So, so one thing that you'll want to watch out for, though, is that the names, this is just sort of an unfortunate uh, Thing. The names as assigned here in the file downloaded from the health department are different than you see here. Um, and so this is a little problematic because you'll see here, for example, we have Bay Ridge, Bensonhurst, uh, and over here we have Bensonhurst, Bay Ridge. So an easy fix for that would be for the uh, health department to add just another column that would give us basically this UHF 34 code, right? So this is just a unique identifier for the neighborhood. Um, we're going to run into a lot uh, fewer problems if, if we have that in there. I, I think at one point it was in these files. For some reason, they, they must have decided to, to take it out. Um, so what that means is that when you're mapping these, you just want to try and map it. Um, you know, just, just pay attention to the, um, the neighborhood name. So for this first one, for Bayside, Meadows, if I look at my spreadsheet, um, I'll find Bayside as 16.8%. So I'm going to start here. If I just click on one of these cells, I'll get an option to edit it. And then I can start putting in the percentages. So you don't have to worry about um, 
adding the percentage sign, you can just type in the values themselves. So let's see. Okay, so I just went ahead and added um, variables for um, the cockroach data, and uh, just so you didn't have to watch me type in um, 68 some odd variables. I also grabbed the uh, the data for asthma, so people uh, that that said they had ever been told by the doctor that they had asthma. So uh, variable one is my cockroach data. Um, I'm just going to rename this now. And I'll rename the second column here to asthma ever. And there we go. So I've got my data in here. Now I can start making the map. So I've got the two variables that I want, asthma ever and cockroaches. And now I'm going to go to map view here. And I can start constructing my map. Um, now, as we talked about in class, uh, because I do have a shapefile in here, it, it knows basically where to plot my my shapes, and so you know you can pick any background that you like. I like these darker ones for this example, so we'll see if we can get one to load. There we go. That one looks nice, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And then from this point, it's just like we did in class. You just pretty much walk through the wizard here on the right side. So. Uh, it's pretty powerful. There's a lot of stuff here. If you wanted to uh, use a custom SQL query, you can. Uh, for this, what we really want is most of the options under Wizards. Uh, so selecting that will bring the Wizards um, dialog box open. And I'm just going to pick Choropleth here. And I'll start with my cockroach data. So you'll notice here, too, it's it's only showing me um, data in my table that's defined as a number, right? Because it needs that for the uh, choropleth map. So um, that's why I'm only seeing these four columns here. So I'll pick cockroaches, uh, pick the buckets. So in this case, um, I'll go ahead and do five buckets, and I'm going to stick with the quantile method, which is good for percentile data. And then you can change the color ramp. Um, maybe I'll do something like that. So I've got my cockroach data in here. My legend is now looking correct, and everything else looks good. So I'm using the five classes. The next thing that I want to do is I want to overlay the asthma data. So I'm going to go up here, click on Add Layer, and I'm going to uh, basically just use a, the, the table that I already have in here. So remember, we're just going to layer the same layer twice and just select different variables. So I'm going to pick UHF 34 neighborhoods again, click add layer, and let's give it a name. So let's do, uh, let's see, New York City. And create the visualization. All right, so it's going to remember my settings from the previous layer, which is kind of nice. And uh, so, so really all I have to do is go back in. I've still have core play uh, here selected, but this time I, I want to go ahead and pick the bubble. So we're going to layer bubbles on top. And uh, the column, uh, asthma ever, is fine. Uh, if I want to change the bubble fill here, I can. Maybe I'll make it a, uh, let's see, we can make it, right, we can do something like that. That's good and everything else looks fine and I can uh, if I want to I can change the radius right so if I want to make the upper ranges stand out a little bit more make them basically I'm just making the bubbles a little bigger I can uh, increase this max radius here and otherwise um, I'm pretty much ready to go so I have my two layers now loaded um, I've got kind of these odd little dots uh, as we figured out in class. That did do it. I just didn't apply my style. Uh, so now if I look at my map I've got uh, I got rid of those other little uh, bubbles. So um, all right so let's see let's go back. We want to turn on our labels for so to demonstrate if I click on one of these areas I should get a pop-up it's going to tell me I haven't selected any fields to be shown in the info window. So to do that, I can actually go back here 
and this is pretty neat. I can pick a design. So since I am using that back, uh, or I'm sorry, the black background, I'll pick dark for my pop-up windows, and I'm going to turn on the asthma data and the cockroach data, and let's also turn on the name of the UHF, which is this first UHF field. All right. So if successful, the next time I click on one of these boxes one of these areas, yeah, I get the little pop-up box here, and it's giving me the uh, percent with asthma and the percent um, that have seen a cockroach in the past month. So you can take it from here. You can edit all of these fields and change them uh, and customize them. And uh, when you're done, simply click on the share option here, and you can do some further customization and what you'll need to uh, submit is this, this public URL. And that'll do it. So uh, hopefully that helped a little bit. If you have other questions, uh, you can certainly uh, post them to uh, Blackboard. Um, if you are not in the class, but you've watched the video and found this interesting or helpful, or you have any other insights, you are certainly welcome to leave comments.